Hi, my name is Raku Panda, and welcome back to the journey to 200 mil hall. In this episode, we get 200 mil Winter Todd! <laughs> Winter Todd released eight years ago, so it's probably no surprise at this point that the best way for an iron to train fire making is via Winter Todd. From level 50 to 99 and beyond, Winter Todd is a mini game that single handedly broke all conventions for how you were supposed to train the artisan skills. Before Winter Todd, if you wanted to train fire making, you would first need to gather something to burn. But that takes time, equipment, money. So, we use super super glue instead. Winter Todd requires no such input resources, in fact it gives you resources. Including logs, which you could theoretically burn, although I would recommend you use them for fletching or construction instead. Moreover, the minigame itself is a very fast method for training. It sits somewhere between traditional U-log and magic log burning rates, but with the added bonus that Winter Todd is a lot more chill, and it gets some woodcutting, fletching, and construction experience on top of the fire making. So the question for myself was what should I cover in the video given it's already the go-to strategy for Ironman fire making? Well, over the years I've heard people tout three best strategies for Winter Todd. You've got the Y Fletch only burn crowd, the Fletch all method, and the burn one fletch one strategy. The general idea of these are most fire making experience per hour, most points or loot per hour, and then a good mix of both respectively. Ultimately what is best or worth is up to you to decide. For myself, I had a nagging voice in the back of my head telling me that what I'm doing may not be the best choice for me. To put that doubt to rest, I ran a multi-day trial of each to give them all a fair shake. And then I evaluated and determined which of the three methods I would utilize for the remainder of the 200 mil grind. But first, I ask you to please drop a like. If you want to join me along this 200 mil all journey, feel free to subscribe. After fire making, we're getting back into Slayer and you're not going to want to miss that. And lastly, leave a comment which of the fire making methods you prefer and why. For me, it'll be too late to change of course, but you might convince someone else to journey down a different path. With that, let's get into the analysis. Some key things to note, I'm only evaluating the mass worlds, I'm not bothering doing solo or hopping between Winter Todd worlds. Yes, I'm aware that these methods exist, but I can't reliably commit to 40 minutes at a time, and monitoring the different worlds for timing is… effort. The mass world rounds can vary wildly depending on the time of day, the day of the week, the number of people on the north side, and how many proactive people there are with rejuvenation pots to heal the pyromancers, all of which can negatively affect the lengths of each round. My analysis is done with the assumption that the four braziers are well maintained and lit, as close to 100% uptime as they can reasonably be, resulting in the shortest rounds possible for each scenario, which is about a game every 5 minutes or 12 games per hour. In the end, what we find to be true in the shortest rounds should correlate to the rounds that drag on for longer. Also, I will not be including the random events in the analysis, I'm referring to the brazier breaking or getting extinguished. These will slightly benefit the fletching variants more than the burn only method, because you'll spend more time near the brazier to be able to engage with them when they happen. Here are the key experience metrics we need to establish to be able to compare these three methods. You get 3 times your fire making level for burning a broom at root, and 3.8 times if the root was fletched into kindling before burning. These values are increased by the 2.5% bonus of the pyromancer outfit, so at 99 fire making that is 304.4 per root and 385.6 per kindling. For chopping the roots, you get 0.3 times your woodcutting level per root, which is 29.7 experience at 99. Fletching the roots into kindling yields 0.6 times your fletching level, so at 99 that is 59.4. Lighting the brazier at the start of the match and each time it gets extinguished thereafter gives 6 times your fire making level worth of experience, which is 594. Achieving more than 500 points during the game will grant you a bonus of 100 times your fire making level at the end of the round. So another 9900 experience per game. Note that these two XP drops do not benefit from the Pyromancer outfit. Last numbers of note, feeding the brazier grants 10 points per root and 25 points per kindling. Repairing and reigniting the brazier grants 25 points each. Okay, so with those numbers laid out, let's take a closer look at the Y Fletch burn only method. This method is primarily focused on getting the most fire making experience per hour. It's accomplished by only chopping and burning roots. 
With this method, you don't need to bring a knife because you're not fletching, hence why fletch? It boasts 29,203 total experience per game and 585 points per game, or 2.17 loot rolls. Again, this is baseline. It does not include the random events or extended games. The Fletch All method aims to maximize the number of points and therefore loot rolls per game at the cost of lower experience rate. So while it only gets 26,633 total experience per game, it gets 875 points per game or 2.75 loot rolls. The hybrid of these two methods is Fletch One Inventory, Burn One Inventory, and is more often used by people that don't have a restoration pool in their house yet and are not using the Redemption Prayer, like early game accounts with 10 HP. Without Redemption or the pool, they need to bring with hard food to counteract the damage from Winter Todd, so they don't have the full 24 inventory spaces available. They only have like 18 or 20 spots, which admittedly is not what I have available. I have the full 24, so my Fletch one inventory is 50% larger than my Burn one. So keep that in mind with this breakdown. I was getting 27,373 total experience per game and 800 points per game, or 2.6 loot rolls. Here are the methods compared side by side on a per game basis, an hourly basis, and here's a simplified representation of the three methods with a frustration factor included. The fletching action can be interrupted like the burning action, but it's also a four tick long action instead of a three tick long action like burning. So the two methods that use fletching are more prone to interruption, hence leading to more frustration when you get interrupted back to back to back to back to winter Todd. Can you not please? Ah! So which method did I decide to do? Um, option four. But there are only three to choose. Yeah, so t technically it's the Burnley method, but there's a twist. I bring a knife with and here's why. There are six tiles between the Broomy Roots and the Brazier, which means there are three ticks of downtime when running between the two. The Fletching action takes four ticks to execute, so for the net cost of one tick, you can turn a root into Kindling, which is a bonus of 15 points, 59.4 Fletching experience, and 81.2 Fire Making experience. If you do this every trip to the Brazier and also reserve a route for the trip back, you can generate up to 5 kindling during these runs, which means for just 5 ticks you can get an additional 75 points, 297 fletching, and 406 fire making experience per game. It doesn't take that much extra effort and it's definitely worth doing. The raw numbers for this fourth method look like this, with 29,572 total experience per game and 650 points per game with the simplified chart looking like this. Now, why did I choose the burn only method over fletching? Mostly because it's the highest fire making and total experience gained. If it were the case that fletching resulted in more total experience and points, I might have opted for that. But in all honesty, Winter Todd is not that much fun. Doing burn only shaves off about 100 hours of this grind. That's a tough hill to overcome by loot rolls. The experience difference would need to be significantly higher by fletching, and the points per game difference of 650 versus 875, you're talking about a half a loot roll per game, and Winter Todd loot isn't that lucrative compared to something like Hunter Rumors. I'm content with the method I chose. With that, let's take a look at the XP chart for fun. Surprise, surprise, it's almost all Winter Todd. We got the Fresh Phoenix here at 1384 KC. Shades of Morton rework was here for Green Log, some intermittent Infernal Axe chopping throughout, and then we went whole hog into Winter Todd to finish it off. The loot I have logged is only inclusive of the latter 163.4 million experience, so feel free to extrapolate it for the rest. My total lifetime points was 5.1 million in 7300 games, so 7300 at 500 points per game is 3.6 million of those total. Uh, with two loot rolls per, so that's 14,600 loot rolls. The remainder at 500 points per roll is another 3,000 loot rolls, so I estimate I've had a total of 17,600 loot rolls total. We managed to get 5 phoenixes, 18 tomes, a dragon axe, more than 24 sets of pyromancer garb, and over 100 torches and gloves, all of which is converted into pages. We ended up with 26,000 burnt pages at the end. 
For the rest of the loot, here's a brief showcase of the total resources that were banked. We got 3.6 million herbal experience after you convert the seeds into herbs. I assumed 9 herbs per seed as a conversion. We got 340,000 crafting experience, 2.5 million cooking experience, with the lower fish also being turned into forestry rations for that extra 51.1 experience, 2.1 million fletching experience, 1 million construction experience, and 440,000 smithing experience. Like 200 mil hunter, I wanted to host an event in Kingdom Clan celebrating 200 mil fire making. I managed to convince the leaders to hold a month-long Winter Tot event through August. As a clan, we gained 140 million fire making experience, with four people getting 99 fire making during the event. For the 200 mil party itself, I asked the attendees to choose one of the five fire letter colors. Whichever color matched the one I randomly chose would split a 200 mil prize amongst the winners. If you've made it this far in the video, dear viewer, leave a comment which color fire you think was the final XP drop. Were you right? And now, for my favorite part of finishing a long grind, cleaning up the bank. We managed to finish banking all the giant seaweed we need for crafting, but we still need 600,000 sand yet. From Kingdom, 200 mil Hunter, and Fire Making, we've racked up 45,000 mahogany logs, along with a bunch of teak and oak, and finally have enough coal to offset all the myth ore we've accumulated from chambers. Intermittently, over the coming weeks, we'll be using up these planks and ores. Most importantly for me, this week, Farlamar Part 2 is being released, which means I can finally start using the 17 million worth of herb XP I've been stockpiling since the announcement of the Herb Lore Alchemy minigame. I plan to camp it until Greenlog at the very least, and I will be making a video summarizing my analysis and strategy shortly thereafter. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.